Hey folks, it's Andrew Kilpatrick here, and today I'd like to talk about MIDI. Uh, and specifically, I'd like to start a series about MIDI that I hope uh, will continue. I have a whole list of topics that are a lot too much information uh, for one video. Uh, so I thought I'd start at the very beginning. This is going to be called MIDI Part 1 and uh, cover some of the basics and then get into some of the more nitty-gritty details as time goes on. Uh, and uh, so why would we want to know about MIDI? Well, believe it or not, MIDI exists in pretty much every music and audio product, whether it's software or hardware. MIDI's in there somewhere, whether we can see it or not. Uh, so MIDI is used, and uh, the, the design of MIDI affects a lot of the things that we use in uh, music production and audio production. So I've always been of the belief that knowing at least a little bit um, about a technology is a good way to make better use of it because we know what its capabilities are, we know what its limitations are, and we can, uh, we can make better use of it knowing those things. Um, because we can sort of maximize the potential. So if you use music software or audio software, if you use uh, especially uh, music hardware like uh, synthesizers and drum machines and things like that, um, those things are all MIDI based and being able to know how they work uh, will help you to get the most out of it. So I've, prepa I've prepared a slide for each uh, episode uh, this is the first one. I'm just going to show you the topics that we're going to cover and then I'll get into some of the details. So let's call this MIDI part one. This is MIDI signal path. Uh, I'm going to give you a quick introduction. Then I'm going to talk about the types of MIDI and then I'm going to talk about the terms in, out, and through which are often misunderstood and just shouldn't really be. And then we're just going to quickly cover at the very end something about merging and splitting MIDI signals because that's something that happens kind of in a lot of devices that we use. Um, so let's go to the bench and in my typical style I'm going to sort of do this with a pen and paper um, because I find it's just easier to sort of explain with a bit of hand waving and, and, uh, and drawing. So quick intro. Let's talk about MIDI. Um, I started using MIDI back in the mid-90s as a, as a, a musician. Uh, I was using MIDI on a Windows 3.1 computer running Cakewalk, uh, controlling some external synthesizers that I had. And um, <clears throat> back in those days, if you didn't really understand even the basics of MIDI, you, you wouldn't get very far. So most people back in those days had books uh, or read the manuals that came with equipment, often had uh, introductions to MIDI and, and things like that. So it was pretty easy to learn about the low-level details of MIDI. Also, software did a much better job at exposing the MIDI protocol and specific things about MIDI to the end user uh, because the software was simpler and it was handling MIDI on, at a more basic level than today. A lot of modern software, I find, tries to hide a lot of those details behind uh, shiny GUIs. And now that people are getting more interested in hardware, uh, especially hardware connected to their computer like modular synths and external uh, synthesizers and things, that's becoming popular again. Uh, a lot of this software is actually uh, trying to play catch up, I would say, and sort of go back to more of the old ways of being able to expose a lot of the, those protocol details so that we can actually have the proper control over our devices again. So I kind of feel like we've come full circle. Uh, I would really prefer just to use a program like my uh, old Cakewalk software from the 90s, um, uh, but, uh, but that, that's the way it goes. So um, let's talk about how MIDI works from a very, very high level perspective so that we can make sure we're all on the same page and know what we're even kind of trying to do here. So let's talk about a typical modern example. Um, we've got our computer right here. This is, let's just call this our DAW. Uh, this is running, you name it, whatever. It doesn't matter which type of software you want to use. We've got our controller keyboard here. 
This doesn't make any sounds, it's just got keys on it, and it's connected to our computer via USB or whatever, doesn't matter. Over here, we've got our synthesizer module. This is like a desktop synth, doesn't have any keyboard on it. So let's ignore just specifically what these lines represent at the moment, but let's just say there's MIDI signals somehow traveling between here and here. So how would we normally use this in a modern setup? Let's say we're doing all our, our sort of our sequencing and our recording on our DAW. We've got our controller keyboard, we're going to play notes there, and when we do that, we expect that our synthesizer, let's say our synthesizer has uh, a pair of headphones attached to it so we can hear what's going on, and we play notes here and we expect the synthesizer will do something. So what's really happening when that's happening? The signal from the synth the, this keyboard, this MIDI signal is going into our DAW, probably going into a track that we have selected and then the output from that track is being sent over to our synth and then we're hearing the result. If we record and then play it back, this part is out of the picture now and now it's just the DAW still sending the MIDI to this synthesizer. But we might have another synthesizer. This has a different front panel, has these different shapes on it, whatever. And now we actually want to go to another track and assign this one, and we want the output from this one as well as this one. I don't know, we need another pair of headphones or something here. But anyway, now we've got one keyboard and we're going to select which one of these we're going to control, and that's all handled within our DAW. Our DAW magically reroutes things and sends the signals to the correct place. We could even use this keyboard, obviously, to control software instruments that are built in here. But Inside the DAW, there's some MIDI things happening that's moving the signals around and sending them where they need to go. So this is a very typical sort of example involving a computer. Another example would be, let's say, uh, once again, we've got our controller. This time, the controller is like a, a drum pad. And over here, we've got a drum machine. And we want to play the drum machine sounds directly from our drum pad because maybe we're performing. So there's no computer involved in this case. In this case, let's call this a MIDI cable because this is most likely what it would be. So we've got our drum pad here. We're playing it with drumsticks. And MIDI signals are being sent over here and our drum machine is playing back its sampled sounds or something like that. So these are typical examples of how we might use MIDI in a real situation. Um, now let's talk about the types of MIDI and some aspects about that because this is something that's often a bit misunderstood. Types, sorry about my writing, types of MIDI. Okay, I'm going to cover three types of MIDI that are kind of the most common things that you'll see when you're connecting between different devices. As I said before, MIDI also exists sort of inside software, and that's a whole other topic for another discussion. But basically, we have DIN MIDI, we have USB MIDI, and uh, we also have network. MIDI. This is a little less common, although there are people that are doing a lot of things with it uh, when, when you have a complicated studio. Uh, okay, DIN MIDI. This is, this is the one that everyone kind of recognizes. This is kind of like the, the de facto shape of MIDI when someone thinks, what, what is MIDI? It's this thing. It's this five pin plug. And only three of the pins are used, actually, the center three pins. Um, and this is kind of the, the traditional MIDI connection. This uh, came out in around 1983. Um, I actually have a synthesizer, which you may have seen during the intro, a Juno, which is leaning up against the wall. And it was probably one of the earliest, not the earliest, but within the first few years of MIDI synthesizers, uh, it was sort of in that first generation. And I actually still use it all the time with all my modern uh, computers and gear and everything. 
And uh, yeah, still happily uh, ticking right along using these kinds of connections. Um, this is really slow, although it's designed in a way that makes uh, MIDI is designed in a way that makes the speed limitation not as much of a problem as people would think. Uh, it runs at 31.25 kilobits per second, which is pretty slow, like the speed of a dial-up modem or so. Then we've got USB MIDI. Now, what I've been showing you off the off camera here is this the connectors on this thing. This is a, a Roland UM1. I use this all the time, and it's a pretty good MIDI interface. Um, and it actually has two of the three kinds of MIDI that we're talking about right now. It's got the DIN MIDI, these kind, and it's got USB. This is just a regular USB A connector. Um, and uh, it actually has two MIDI ports in it. One goes in and the other one goes out. Um, so USB MIDI came around in the late 90s. It's actually part of the class. There's a, a standard class compliant MIDI class. Around 1999, I believe, is when the class was made. It runs at 12 megabits per second, but not really because there's USB stuff that happens. But anyway, um, it encompasses all the same things that are part of this MIDI, um, but it puts it over USB. And we'll talk about that in a, in a later um, episode, uh, talking about the actual details of how USB MIDI works. And then there's network MIDI, which I'm less familiar with. Um, I know there are a few different implementations. Uh, the more popular one, uh, from what I understand, is called RTP MIDI. Um, you can do it over any kind of connection um, RTP, RTP MIDI is, uh, I believe, is what Apple uses uh, if you do IP MIDI within uh, Mac. Uh, I'm not a Mac user, so I don't know the, all the details of that. Um, there's also another way to do MIDI over a network, uh, over Wi-Fi or, or uh, Ethernet or whatever, and that's OSC. Uh, OSC is misunderstood, and when it came out, uh, a lot of people were like, oh, it's the MIDI killer, this is going to be it for MIDI. But in fact, if you read the OSC spec, you'll find that uh, they don't actually replace anything that MIDI does. In fact, uh, when it's time to do MIDI things with, um, with OSC, they just allow you to put MIDI over OSC. It's just the same protocol that you'd get on here, except they just put it in, a, in an OSC message. So let's just all be clear. OSC doesn't replace MIDI, it encapsulates MIDI and then adds more things. Okay, now let's talk about the most misunderstood concept about MIDI, uh, which is in, out, and through. Through spelled like a drive through. In, out, and through. Okay, this is the most annoying part of MIDI because, unfortunately, as much as I like Roland, uh, they make devices like this, and they're not the only ones that have misleading um, terminology printed on these connectors. This says connect to MIDI out, but what it should just say is in, because that's there's an arrow actually pointing in. This is where MIDI goes in. This one says connect to MIDI in, whereas it should say out, because this is where MIDI comes out. And this is really, really dumb that companies have decided to sort of change the way that we talk about things because if you've ever used audio equipment, inputs and outputs don't, aren't, aren't that big of a deal. In MIDI we just call them in and out, not input, output, but on audio equipment it's just inputs and outputs. We always know that audio comes out of an output and goes into an input, so it's the exact same with MIDI. And one thing to keep in mind about MIDI is that it's unidirectional. Um, that means that MIDI only goes in one direction. And in fact, a MIDI interface like this is actually two different MIDI interfaces. One goes in and one goes out. In fact, there's two LEDs here, one showing each direction. And there's two cables on the one end. And there's actually two ports running over the MIDI, uh, the USB cable. When it shows up in your computer, you'll actually see an in and an out. It's actually two things. So in, out, and through, this is really good uh, that we have this and we should just call it what it is. Ins take signals from outs and outs 
plug into ins. That's pretty straightforward. So here's an example of why this is an interesting and useful thing. Let's say we've got our DOS software over here uh, on our PC or our Mac. It's connected to our UM1. They spelled it out like a word. And we've got the two plugs on our MIDI interface like this. Let's say this is the out and this is the in. So let's just start with the out first. We've got our DAW. We're going to play a sequence on our DAW. We want it to drive our external synthesizer. Here's our synthesizer box that we had on our last uh, screen there, our last page. When I press play in my DAW, it sends signals out the out and our synthesizer plays along with our song. That's great. So what does the DAW know? The DAW knows obviously the existence of the UM1 because it's this is USB here and this is MIDI over here. Obviously it knows about the UM1 because it's detected the MIDI uh, device in the computer. The DAW software doesn't really deal with MIDI uh, USB devices it d directly, but it's detected the MIDI device. It's like, oh, I've got UM1, I've got an out and an in. So it knows it's sending data out through there. Uh, this is coming out the MIDI out, controlling our synth, but the DAW doesn't know what synth is connected. There's no way for it to detect this synth or do anything to it. In fact, we could unplug this while it's playing and the DAW won't know any, anything different. And that's, I would say, a really good advantage of the way MIDI works because you can configure things however you want in your studio and your software is not going to try to rearrange stuff and do crazy things. As long as it sees the same MIDI interface is connected, it will pretend like it doesn't know there's, there's a difference. You could unplug this, you could plug a different synth in while it's playing, it doesn't matter, and it will respond accordingly. There's an, and that gets us into our next point, which is through. What do we do with in? Let's, let's talk about in first. I think that's important. So we've got our old MIDI keyboard here. This is not a USB keyboard. This is just a regular MIDI controller keyboard or an old synth uh, that has an, a MIDI out. When we play keys on the keyboard, the out port will generate MIDI events. And we can connect that to the in on, on our UM1. This would just normally go right into the back uh, of this keyboard. And now when we play notes, our DAW will see MIDI events coming in through the USB MIDI interface. And that's cool. Now we can play notes and loop it through here, just like we had on the other, uh, on the other page. And we're going to control our synth, our hardware synth, or our software synth for that matter, uh, with our keyboard. But let's say we only have one UM1, and let's say we actually have two of these synths, or, or a different synth. This synth, this is a drum machine like we had before. And we also want to control our drum machine from the same UM1, but unfortunately we've already used its port over here. What can we do? This is the in port here. Most synths have an in, out, and a through, so the third connection is the special one. In and out, we know what those do. The out will make MIDI events, the in will take MIDI events, but the through will give us a copy of the in events. The out has nothing to do with the through. Uh, and the reason we have through, let's put the through on this end, is so that we can daisy chain the MIDI. This is the in on our drum machine. Uh, so we can daisy chain the MIDI to multiple devices. And in fact, if this device has a through, we could daisy chain it to another device and so on. And that basically allows us to use one port to control multiple devices. Now, there's obviously limitations to this because if this synthesizer uses all the MIDI data that's coming in, well then we're going to have a little bit of trouble. We're going to have to configure things so that there's some data that, that this can use by itself. So a lot of, for instance, multi-tambral synths that respond to every channel and every note coming in, obviously we would have to configure that so that we could have a channel left over for our drum machine. But there's other kinds of MIDI events. Let's say our synthesizer only cares about notes. 
but we also send MIDI clock. Well, our drum machine, maybe it doesn't care about notes, maybe it only cares about the, the MIDI clock because it's going to play in sync with our DAW. So this is a typical example of how you would use a through. Um, through is literally an electrical copy of the in. Uh, it gets buffered again so that the signal is strong and has sharp edges again, which is good. Uh, you can daisy chain this multiple times. Um, not infinite number of times. There will be some electrical uh, distortion that happens if you do it too many times, and that would basically eventually cause data errors and things like that. But for practical purposes, this is a totally valid, and uh, it's what it's intended for, actually, to, to, uh, to be used. Uh, so this is a typical setup where we're using in, out, and through. And the very last part of this episode, uh, I'm running a little long on the time, but let's just get through it, is to talk about MIDI merging and splitting. Merging, I'll just put it at the bottom of this page. Merging and splitting. So this is more of like a logical thing um, in terms of how it's actually done, um, but it's a physical thing in how we would configure our, our systems. Instead of daisy chaining through here, not all synths have a through uh, port, especially smaller ones. They sometimes just omit that connection. Um, so splitting would allow us to, instead of going through, let's say instead, we're just going to rub that out. Let's say we would connect this to a box, a MIDI splitter box, split, that has multiple throughs. So this would be like through, it's essentially just a through with no synth inside, or multiple throughs, through, through, through. Now we could connect this to each device separately. So this could connect to here, this one connecting to here, this one could connect somewhere else. And this will just, instead of daisy chaining the signal, just provides a different sort of way of wiring up your studio. And the good thing about that is, let's say we don't want to use one of our synths or we took it to lend to our friend or it's turned off. It doesn't need to be on for, for this connection to work. Um, it also helps with this problem of, of the signal distortion if we chain through too many devices and so on. MIDI merging is kind of the opposite of splitting. That would be a situation where let's say we have our, our keyboard here and we have our drum pads here, and we want to connect them both to a synth at the same time. So we have our merge box here, and then this is connected to our synth. So in this case, we take two different signals and we add them together to generate one signal to go out to our device. These are less common. This is very common in software, actually. Um, it's always happening in various software where we're taking different signals. For instance, when you play back a track in a DAW and play your, your keyboard live over it, that's merging that's happening in software. Uh, in hardware, not as common. Still useful, though, uh, and there's some specific details that this merger kind of has to be aware of how MIDI works so that it can combine these signals in a way that, that, that makes sense. Anyway, that is let's call it episode episode one, um, MIDI part one. Uh, and I hope that you enjoyed this. If you did, then please subscribe because there's, there will be more episodes coming soon. I have a list of topics and uh, so this is hopefully getting everyone on the same page so we're all kind of speaking the same language. And I hope that you maybe have learned something from this uh, so far. Uh, please leave your comments and uh, like the video if you found it useful. And, uh, and hopefully you'll join me for the, for the rest of our adventure. Uh, I'm sure we'll all learn something and have a good time. Thanks a lot. See ya.